Okay, uh, this is part three that we're going to mark out, which is the bottom wing, if I remember correctly. Um, it's the smaller of the two wings. Now the drawing is shown in this orientation, and basically you kind of want to look at the piece like this. This is the middle line here, and this is an important place to start. So I'm going to measure my piece of metal here, and I'm going to T-square a line straight up. I forgot to put the scriber. So when I measure the piece in length, it is a total of 200 long. So I'm going to mark where 100 is and T-square that line across. Try and become more central. Now, basically I'd like to draw my piece like this. I think if I find it's an easier method to do it. Um, we need to find these two centers for the two curves and it's this, the piece is symmetrical so whatever's on this side is the same on that side. Um, the first circle is over 80 up to there and the second one from the center line is over 83. So I'm going to mark both of those distances in both directions. So I'm going to mark 80 and 83 on the left. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and mark 80 and 83 as well. 80 and 83. I'm now going to T-square both of those lines up. But to make things easier on myself, I'm just going to T-square the 80 approximately halfway up. And I'm going to do the 83 the whole way up. That will allow me to quickly differentiate between the two lines. And I didn't do it there. But hopefully I remember it's the inside line. Now, um, we're told our radius 12, all four corners. That's fine. We're going to set our dividers to 12 in a minute. Um, all four corners are radius 12 and we need to find the centres for those curves first. So up here at the top of the drawing it tells us that it's 19 in from the front. You can see the projection line going all the way up to 19 from the front corner. And then from there it's a further 11. So when you add 19 and 11 you get 30. So from there to there is 30. So I'm going to mark these two distances in on all four lines. So on the inside one I'm going to mark 19 and on the outside line I'm going to mark 30 which is 19 plus 11. I do the same on the other side 19 and then 30. Now all four of those marks can be punched because we want to uh, use the dividers now in a minute. And so that's the four points punched. One, two, three, four. Uh, this is the front. So, it's orientation is like that. So I'm going to put 12 on my dividers now. And again, I'm starting at 10, so that means I have to go to 22. Sorry, this is out of. And I'm going to draw these partial circles. There's no harm in going over the size that you need to go. This one doesn't want to do it properly. Alright, 
So we've got our different circles there now, two here and two here. From the very centre, this point, it's a tangent to the front ones. So again, we're going to line up carefully. By using our ruler, we line up the very front point here and we're going to turn it so that we get a tangent to our root, to our circle. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So as you can see, the shape of the airplane, or airplane wing is starting to take shape now. Now, uh, another nice point to find now will be the back of these wing, this wing, this point here. And if we look at our drawing, we've got a projection line going to 35 from here to here. So straight back 35 there gives us that back point. So I've already got the line T squared in. I'm going to measure 35 back. Gives me a point there, and now I'm going to do tangents from there to the back of the circle. One side done. And the other side done. So now we have the basic outline of our wing. Um, next we need to mark for the three holes, one, two, and three. Our drawing tells us that this first one is 12 millimeters from the back in. So that's easy enough to find. As you're back in 12 millimeters, so I have 12 at the point that I want to start at, and at the end of the ruler then is zero, 12 millimeters away. I can punch that because we're going to be drilling a hole there. Now I have to find the other two. Well, what I were told here is that they are 13 further on and they're 25 out from the center line. So I'm going to do the 25 lines first of all. I'm going to measure up and down from the center line 25 millimeters on the front edge. measure 25 down. I'm going to t-square those two lines most of the way across. Like so. So we have the two lines here and here. Now we have to do a little bit of calculation. If we look at the drawing, we know from there to there is 35. We know this is 12 and this is 13. 12 plus 13 equals 25. So the gap between the front and the hole must be 10. So if we just measure in 10 on both of those lines, we have the correct point. So from the edge, I'm going to measure in 10. Mark it, and do the same down here. Mark it. I can punch both of those, and we are ready to go drilling. And that's our part marked out. Right, so we're going to drill part number three now. Um, we only have three holes to drill in it. So as usual, putting it in the clamp and wearing goggles. We're going to drill the three holes, one, two, and three. Two, 3.5 drill bit, and away we go.
those guys. A uh, big drill bit again, just to clean off the backs of the holes. And that's the drilling done. Now the next step is to use the shears and I'm going to cut the front pieces here and I'm going to cut the tangents on the two sides. I actually never scribed in the tangents. I forgot to do that so I'm actually going to do that first and then I'll cut off the two bits. Right, when I was marking this piece out, part number three, um, there are tangents up here between the two circles and down at the other end as well and I forgot to do those at the time. But it's no hassle, it's just a matter of doing them now. That's one side and then the other side. Okay. And we have our two tangents drawn in there now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the bench or the shears over the other side, cut off this section here and here, down the side, down the side. You can't cut out this triangle on the shears. Right, at this stage we've cut off all the pieces that we can with the shears, and um, now this section has to be removed. Now, if you're in second year or third year, you're going to have to use a hacksaw, a snips, um, a scroll saw or something like that. I fortunately as a teacher get to use the bansa basically because it's quicker. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I am wearing goggles and even though it might look like it on camera, my fingers are well away from the blade. I'll be quietening down the volume on this because the machine is loud. So when you're finished hack sawing, your piece should look something like this. Um, it's now time to go and do some filing. There's a fair bit more filing on this than there was on the other pieces, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Right, so it's simply a matter of filing this piece down to shape. I'm going to be using a rough large file and a smooth large file to get the, file. the corners here. I'll probably just use the smooth file and then I'll use a rough file to get very close to the line on both of these sides. I am going to speed this bit part of the video. One important thing to note, uh, because this aluminium is so thin, you must remain close to the jaws on the vise at all times, otherwise you'll end up bending the piece of metal as you're filing. Um, use soft jaws as well, otherwise the serrated jaws of the vise will damage your piece. So let's get started.
so that's it files um, I'm just going to deburr the back of it now um, when you're filing metal and you're doing it properly you will get a little burr on the back just get a smooth file and just run it at a slight angle and that will take off the burrs you're not trying to file it down so just rub gently and you only do it where you file it There we have our piece complete. Um, that's probably the hardest piece we've done so far. The next piece is part two that I'm going to do. Um, I'm trying to work my way through the project pieces uh, from the easiest up to the hardest. Um, so it's very similar to this and you can see that in the next video.